all my wonderful viewers welcome to dog tv kenya the best documentary channel for all dog lovers and i'm your host linda kenyita and today i am in limuru you can see the teas eh? kiambu and i am visiting the Souza kennel home for pedigree long coat german shepherds and i cannot wait to show you what these guys have they are awesome they have some awesome awesome long long coat german shepherds and uh, stay with me and remember if you haven't subscribed to our channel click the subscription button and also click the notification bell to get notified every time we do a posting follow me and let's go see what we have Oh, hi, Steve. Fine, fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, Alinda, welcome to the Suza Kennel, the home of Pedigree Long for German Shepherd. Okay, thank you. Let me show you around. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Asante, Asante. Here we have a black GSD. Mm -hmm. It's called Blackie. It's three years of age. Three years? Yes, three years of age. And he's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, then there's a sable puppy. It's a female. Uh, she's six months old. Yeah. A sable six. Sable, yes. Okay. Yeah. I will ask that question later because okay. it confuses me. Okay. And uh, it's called. Uh, oh, okay, Dini. He's 11 months. 11 months uh, long GSD. Uh -huh. It's called uh, Di Souza Malboro. Di Souza Malboro. Malboro. Yeah. Okay, he's awesome. Yeah. He's also awesome. Yeah. Uh -huh. She's a black German Shepherd. Uh -huh. uh, she's six months old. Uh, Little mate to the sable girl. Okay. Yeah. Also a sable girl. Uh, though not mine came for breeding. Came to breed with the black GSD. Oh, so you have a start, sir? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Then this is a female. Uh, she's around two, e uh, uh, two, almost three years. Yeah. She's uh, the Souza Malaika. The Souza Malaika. Thank you. <laughs> uh, then this other girl, she's 10 months old. She's called the Susan Leila. Yeah, she's a female. Yeah. Then, uh, then uh, she's a female. Uh, she's uh, three, uh, three years almost four. She's all house just. Yeah. Uh, very composed, like Hannah yeah. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, uh, then this is a girl. Uh, she's a puppy. She's a short coat of all the. The other one, she's the, okay, she's the only one you need that. Okay, she's a short coat. Yeah, she's uh, five months old. Yeah. Uh, this is a Kimberly. This is a Kimberly, yes. Uh, then Bendel Nora. Yeah, she's, uh, uh, she's almost four years also. Yeah, she has two CCs at the show. Remaining one more CC, CC to be a champion. Ah. Then uh, Penjo Bavaria, yeah, she's a female, but kid name is called Tia. Yeah, she's a female. Yeah. Awesome dogs. Thank you. Very beautiful. The term Sebo has been coming up a lot when I go visit kennels. Okay. Uh, but when I, personally, when I look at it, I can see it's a German Shepherd. So, how do I know it's a Sebo? And okay. Uh, for uh, for German Shepherd, there are different. Uh, Okay, type of German Shepherd. Okay, yes, uh, like a uh, different term of their pigmentation. Uh, like now we have the black German Shepherd, we have the sable German Shepherd, and we have the normal, uh, which is a bit common to almost everyone, the black and tan. Yeah, but uh, all the same, uh, okay, all the same, the sables are still uh, uh, German Shepherds. I normally get them from blacks. You can never get uh, a black or a sable. Yes. Yeah, so sables are still German Shepherds. Okay. Yeah. You only keep German Shepherds. Yes. Why German Shepherds? It was a very big admiration uh, from Temo as a little boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then I actually, near where we used to stay, we used to stay near the police station. Mm -hmm. Okay, back in Kericho. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I used to see the dog, okay, near the police uh, dogs. Mm -hmm. So from that time, I really had an, an interest with German Shepherd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, since my first German Shepherd, mm -hmm. I've never changed. Okay. Have you ever kept any other breed? Yes, uh, at one particular point I had a Rottweiler, I had a Great Den, mm -hmm. but I ended back coming back to German Shepherd. Mm -hmm. They are quite good, they are easy to manage and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, how are your dogs trained? Are they protection dogs? Are they social dogs? Or do you leave that to the buyers? Who, like, no, the ones you've kept here, yeah, are they social or are they 
protection. Okay, Dine, most of my okay, the most of my German Shepherd, they are show dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, some people convert them to security dogs. Others use them for their show. Others use them as just companion dogs. Yeah, so they are uh, dual purpose. They can serve both uh, companion dogs and also security dogs. But basically, mine I do show dogs. Yes. What's your routine with them? Uh, every single day or uh, or we skip a day, we normally groom them. We have a brush that we normally groom their cottage. Uh, uh, like every single day or we skip a day. Yeah, so the secret behind uh, long is uh, just regular grooming. You have to groom them almost regularly. Yes. Your dogs are massive. Thank you. And I know to maintain these massive dogs, you yeah. need to properly feed them. Most definitely. What do you feed your dogs and how many times do you get to feed your dogs? For the adult dogs, we normally feed them twice. Uh, we feed them in the morning and in the evening. But now for puppies, they feed uh, up to three, four times in a day. Ah. In the morning, we normally give them uh, dry cables, uh, for, uh, a baby in the morning, a baby and milk. Uh, then in the evening, we give them rice and meat. Ah. Yes. Okay. And, uh, uh, and of course, water in between the day. It has to have water almost uh, like almost full time. Vegetables? Vegetable, not really. Not what? really? Yes, yes, yes. I thought they are supposed to be, what, what's the term, omnivorous. Yes, but you know, Nini, their formulated uh, food uh -huh. is, uh, it is an all-round food. Oh. Yeah, it has uh, vegetables, it has, uh, it has meat, it has all the proteins and minerals. Oh. Yeah. So you do you have somebody, have you employed somebody to take care of the kennel or do you get to do it yourself? Okay, I have my team. Uh, I work with my wife mm -hmm. and we also have uh, one extra guy that normally help us uh, with cleaning and feeding mm -hmm. and uh, we normally clean after every two three days we wash mm -hmm. but every single day we have to sweep mm -hmm. like two to, like two to three times in a day yes but washing after three days mm -hmm. yeah because uh, okay, because your place is very cold so we cannot wash every single day yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you take care of the kennel together with your wife. Yes. Now, yeah. I've been interviewing young guys out here. Okay. Now, I want to say, um, like, um, they are having issues with girls because they find girls, like, they don't like them dogs. They concentrate more on the dog. Yeah. They're always with their dogs. Yeah. So, how did you hack that? Now, okay, now that question, I cannot answer it. Mm -hmm. I have to call my wife to answer <laughs> that question on her own. Okay, yeah. Okay. Hi. Hello. My name is Linda. Introduce yourself. I'm Susan. Mm -hmm. Susan Omboy. Mm -hmm. Karaoke. Okay. Yes. So you take care of the kennel together with your husband. Do you love dogs? Eh, uh, yes, I do. <laughs> but at first, I didn't. At first, you did not. So what changed the, your mind? Uh, I saw his passion, him grow, us growing with them, yeah, and, and then my passion kept kept growing together, yeah. So I've been hanging out with some young guys who say they have issues with girls because of their loves of dogs. Uh, what can you tell my fellow girls out there who are single and they are occupying these guys because of dogs? I can tell them. This is a real deal. <laughs> they are real deal. Uh, in terms of cash and so many other things. Yes. Okay. Ladies, I hope you've had it. <laughs> they are making it. She fell in love with the dogs because of his passion. So please do not write out my friends. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So as a team. How much is your participation in running the kennel? Uh, actually, Mimi and your Uraniote. Yes. Because, yeah, yeah, he has other shugulis uh -huh. and I'm here. So, how is your schedule like at the kennel? Uh, when I wake up, uh, I come here at 7 30, uh -huh. I give them food. Uh -huh. Uh, dry food mm -hmm. and then I clean the houses. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, so it's not a lot of work at the every uh, No, because you don't wash every day. No, okay. Yes, because it's cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
do you get uh, do you source an uh, a trainer from outside or do you guys do your own training? Okay, mostly uh, we have our own trainer that normally comes. Yeah. And I heard you mention that your dogs participate in shows. How many of them? Is it all of them? Do you have award winners? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, we have quite a number of them that have really performed well at the show. And we have two girls that uh, they are remaining with one CC each to become champions. One in Okidin one is the, the whelping box. One uh, Okidin one is here. Uh, yes, and when it comes to quality, just by looking at them, I fell in love with this guy the first. It was love at first sight. I'm feeling bad I'm not taking him home. <laughs> so, <laughs> how long have you been breeding dogs? I've bred a dog for the last um, eight years. Mm -hmm. Actually, actively breeding uh, uh, around seven, eight years. But I've kept dogs, I think, all my life. All your life. All my life. Uh, you, you are one of those boys in the village who grew up with dogs everywhere. I grew up with dogs. I found dogs at our place. Mm -hmm. My grandfather kept dogs. My father kept dogs. Mm -hmm. So I've lived with dogs, I think, all my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to breeding dogs, why did you decide to take uh, your love for dogs the next level? It, you, it's not just keep dog, one dog. Why go into breeding? I bred dogs uh, to improve the quality of the dogs we have mm -hmm. and uh, also to have my companions mm -hmm. uh, because you know I've uh, because I've told you I'm one person that grew up with dogs so it is a passion driven project mm -hmm. uh, that turned into a business into a family business and also my passion basically yes and now that you've talked about business let's yes. jump right into it <laughs> sure. um Running a business, uh, running a kennel as a business, um, how how has it been? Can you say like your efforts are being rewarded? How is it running a kennel in Kenya as a business? Uh, okay, running, uh, actually uh, the dog uh, industry, mm -hmm. first of all, uh, actually you have to love it, enjoy it, mm -hmm. then eventually it will pay. Okay, basically, I don't look at it as a, as a money-making business, as per se. I enjoy. Of course, to some extent, it's paying. Yeah, but you really have to enjoy, and you have, and you really have to keep a lot of uh, effort in it. Yeah. But Jackie is a boy. Do you offer start services? Yes, for him. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we do offer uh, his start. Uh, for the value of a puppy in exchange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but basically for the value of one puppy, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the start fee for this guy. So I have seen puppies around. Yeah. Uh, if I want to take that puppy home, how much do I need to party? Uh, for, um, okay, for a registered dog, it depends uh, from, okay, from 75 to 100. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically. You've mentioned about registered dogs. Like, explain to me the importance of um, a registered and having registered dogs or buying a registered dog. Okay, basically it's the documentation of, of their generation from their great-grandparents up to them. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and, uh, okay, uh, and the beauty about uh, registered dogs, at least uh, it helps you minimize things like inbreeding, uh, you try and call away issues uh, with genetic issues mm -hmm. and uh, the beauty about uh, registration again mm -hmm. it is recognized uh, in most pa okay, in most uh, parts of the of the world so uh, I had you mentioned um, your dogs are show dogs explain that to me because I ha I really I think I've, I've met uh, line do working dogs I think so I've met uh, what what else have show dogs not really so explain explain to me what what show dogs are really are okay show dogs okay basically those are dogs which uh, can really perform at the show and they can't be taken to the show I uh, you know there are dogs which are working dogs and show dogs okay like in the Souza kennel basically we deal with only registered dogs and the and the show lines they can also be used as guard dogs but yeah so they are dual they can be used at the show. They, they can also be used uh, as guard dogs as well. Okay. Uh, so far, in your journey of breeding dogs, yeah. what challenges have you faced? 
Yeah, the, okay, there are quite a couple of challenges because I'm sure in every, okay, okay because I'm sure in, in every ventures, there's no venture that you just uh, walk in the park. Yeah, uh, in the same way even uh, with, uh, with our dog breeding uh, uh, project. For one, we have an issue with, uh, with food. Okay, then getting access to food at times becoming an issue. There's a time it's quite difficult to get. Again, in the cost of dry food, it is quite high. Yeah, that's another challenge. Another challenge uh, maybe is um, manpower, the kettle, sometimes, not always. And uh, and vaccines. Yeah, because the time that uh, we're running out of vaccines, and no need for puppies, uh, minus vaccine is something very, very, it is quite uh, risky for breeders. Yeah, so basically it's vaccines and uh, and food to some extent. Yeah. How do you ensure that your dogs are warm and cozy? Uh, yes, if they're not taken okay, in, uh, care of properly, yeah, they're prone to pneumonia, just like uh, most of the animals. And uh, then the beauty with the cold and uh, long-haired German Shepherd, it helped their coat grow bigger and longer. Uh, yes, it helped their coat okay, grow longer now to be able to resist the cold yeah and uh we don't wash the kennels every single day because of the cold weather yeah so maybe skip uh two days but uh, we clean them each and every time we sweep maybe in the evening we might put uh uh sawdust just to keep uh their feet warm or rather their their houses warm what about uh, the general grooming of the de dogs when it comes to washing them in this weather? How often do you get to wash the dogs? Uh, mostly we normally wash them uh, when it is sunny. Uh, if need be, we can wash them. Uh, then you use the, what do you call, what do you call that thing you used to, or you need to dry your hair? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, when need be. Uh, but mostly, we normally wash when it is sunny, but grooming, because they are long-haired German Shepherd, we, uh, okay, we always groom them each and every single day. Yes. For someone out there mm, wondering, I'm uh, thinking like they love dogs and they would want to start breeding dogs, what advice would you give them? I, I, I can advise them uh, to love the dogs. Actually, anyone can do dog breeding uh, a project or unit but basically they they shouldn't really look at the money first they really should care much about the dog you have the passion driven actually you have to love the dog first yeah so once you love the dog and uh, and uh, you take them okay and you take good care of them definitely you can keep yeah and uh, and the venture is good it is open to everyone but uh, not everyone lasts in the business because uh, most of us come in the business basically because you want to get money out of them y yes yeah but uh, it needs a lot of patience just like any other business a and it needs dedication and and a lot of passion yeah other than the german shepherd is there a dog out there that you think maybe one day maybe one day you would want to breed or have in the kennel yes i'm a very very big fan of uh of St. Bernard's. Mm -hmm. They are actually, actually, that is my, actually my weakness is that, actually my biggest weakness is that I love big dogs. Mm -hmm. Not that I despise any other small dogs, mm -hmm. any other toy dogs, but I'm, a, but I'm a big fan of big dogs. When it comes to the business side of uh, running a, a kennel, where is your market? Who are these people who are spending this money on these dogs. The dog lovers are the ones that are buying the dogs. Uh, uh, sometimes we even sell them to breeders. Mm -hmm. We've sold the dog locally and uh, beyond our borders. Mm -hmm. We've sold as far as Ghana, as far as Rwanda, as far as Tanzania, mm -hmm. Uganda, and even locally. Yeah, so the name De Souza, actually we just grew Pole Pole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I think our like our clientele keep coming back and uh, we're really humble uh, because of that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is your marketing strategy when it comes to selling the dogs? Yeah, there's referrals. Uh, like uh, the dog that we saw before, then uh, 
Then you get referrals from the people that we sold to. Uh, then uh, the social media is another platform for almost everyone. So you're on social media? Yes. On uh, in Instagram, is this was a kennel. Mm -hmm. Facebook, this was a kennel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, yes, this was a kennel most of the places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also have our page. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, and at the show also. Yeah, you know, people normally come to the show just to see dogs and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. So basically, those are the platforms mm -hmm. and so many others. When when it comes to the health of your dogs, yeah. how do you handle that? I think on that part, I'm um, uh, one of the most fortunate uh, breeders in the country. Mm -hmm. It happened that I'm a veterinary personnel by profession. Oh. Yeah, so I normally attend to my dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in terms of that uh, field, mm -hmm. the dogs are sorted. If, okay. Yeah, even, not, uh, even if not me, my colleagues mm -hmm. chip in uh, whenever I'm not around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but basically I do most of the thing for myself, mm -hmm. yes. So you are, when it comes to animals, you are, for you to be a vet, you have to be an animal lover. It, it's not just about yes. dogs, you are an overall animal lover. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm a big fan of animals. Mm -hmm. I've not kept only dogs only. Yeah, I've kept so many other animals. Mm -hmm. I have a farm, mm -hmm. I have sheep, mm -hmm. I have goats, I have... I kept pigs at some point, mm -hmm. I've kept chicken. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm an animal person. No. Yeah. Now, from a professional view, um, who breeds dogs, yes. how do you take care of puppies from birds? Like, I know there are cases of uh, puppies die, you, I might buy a puppy and it goes die. But if I want to really take good care of a puppy, what are the steps What are the steps I can take to ensure that um, I grow up a healthy puppy that survives? Okay, um, the most important bit okay, that starts. Is, so when you have the puppies, mm -hmm. from the very first day, they have to be in a very warm place. Mm -hmm. They have to, to be in a very clean and a warm environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, and uh, you have to keep on checking if each and every puppy is suckling, okay? Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. Then uh, okay. So that is the very first stage. Mm -hmm. Then after that, uh, after two weeks, now you start uh, deworming the puppies. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever you're deworming the puppies, mm -hmm. you have to deworm the mother. Mm -hmm. So after every two weeks, you have to deworm the puppies. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when the puppy clock around uh, five weeks is when now you start your first vaccinations. Uh, you give your parvo vaccine, so, but now different people have uh, different ways of uh, vaccinating. Uh, so some people give uh, first parvo, then another parvo, then DHLP. Yeah, uh, so different people take the different route of vaccination. So, but basically, you have to deworm the puppies uh, every two weeks. Then they have to get the primary jobs, uh, the parvo and parvo and DHLP. Uh, okay, some of them stays to a point uh, that they are given rabies. Others are uh, okay. Some puppies are sold before they are given rabies, which is still okay. Uh, yeah. So basically, with puppies, uh, the hygiene has to be very high. They have to be fed high nutritional food, and uh, okay. Then the other bit, when you're feeding a uh, 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 puppy dini, okay, the puppy dini with puppy food, you feed uh, the mother and the puppies at the same time. Yeah, so for a healthy dog, you have to take care, okay, you have to take good care of the mother as well as the puppies. That's wonderful, that is wonderful. So you've had it. For you too, if you're out there and you're a breeder and you're thinking about, um, or you're, you're out there and you're thinking about breeding, breeding dogs, you have to put your love and your passion first. I, I, and I'm thinking this generally comes to everything that you do with passion. First comes the passion and then comes the love. And if you're offering quality stuff, you'll get referrals for that business that you long for. Point has taken. Okay, thank you for having us. It's been wonderful. Karibu, karibu. Okay, okay. Thank you for having us. Karibu. Okay. And you're welcome anytime. Okay. Thank you. Tell our viewers bye. Bye bye and see you. It's been D'Souza Kennels. Okay, it's been D'Souza Kennel. And um, thank you for sticking around with me. Remember, if you've watched from the beginning to the end and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Go subscribe, hit that notification bell to get notified every time we. 
hits every time we post a new episode and uh I promise you good stuff every time we post. I hope you've had fun. I hope you've learned. I'm sad I'm leaving those dogs behind, but uh, what do I do? I'm your girl, Linda Kenyita, and this is Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. Bye. See you until next time.